Well, we have made it to Advent week three, and this is from Thursday of this week. The object we're thinking about this week is belts. And the text today is from Mark 6, verses 7 through 13, and I'm going to read Mark 6, verses 8 through 9. Jesus ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. Sandwiched between Jesus' rejection from his hometown of Nazareth and the death of John the Baptist, the 12 disciples go out two by two into the world to preach, teach, heal, and cast out demons. How confident would they have been after having seen Jesus himself disrespected and subsequently unable to perform miracles among those who knew him the best. And by the way, do not take anything with you on this perilous journey where people may or may not welcome you. A contemporary reality show has nothing on first century discipleship. Go, tell people to repent. Do not take food, a bag or money. Be ready to depend on the hospitality of strangers. Do what you can to ease the suffering of those you encounter along the way. When I consider the risks of those first followers of Jesus, the ones that they took for his sake, I am humbled, embarrassed really. When have I done anything remotely similar? I get anxious when someone emails me their disapproval of a sermon or posts a less than affirming comment on social media. Jesus tells the people closest to him who have already left what they knew, family, friends, professions, community, to risk even more for the sake of the gospel. Do not even tuck a 20 in your belt in case of emergency. Just head out and start telling and enacting the story of God's nearness and power. Recently, in the wake of protests in response to yet another killing of an unarmed black person by police, several close friends, awakened and stunned by the brutal, violent video of this murder, have asked me, what do we do? This question is oft repeated by well-intentioned people, themselves not subject to daily fear of random brutality and centuries-long discrimination. I certainly have asked myself this question. We pose it in the face of a myriad of the world's problems, poverty, war, illness, injustice. What do we do? However, too often, we make this a rhetorical question, coupled with a shrug of the shoulders or a sigh of resignation. And yet discipleship in the Gospels is anything but rhetorical or theoretical. Following Jesus is in fact literal, actual, physical. Faithfulness to God demands that we alter where we go, with whom we interact, and what we take on the journey. Go, proclaim, teach, heal, cast out demons. Do not do this alone. Do not be weighed down by baggage, by the need to protect your possessions, your investments in worldly security. Radical trust in the one who sends you is needed because you are not to stuff your belt with all the things you think will keep you safe and apart from the pain of those you encounter along the way. Remember, Jesus got rejected by the people who raised him. And John the Baptist is about to get killed for his testimony. All right, head out. Head out to those people and places who need relief from oppression, poverty, illness, and all manner of suffering. Sobering, isn't it? Discipleship should cause us to stop and wonder if we are ready to do what God calls us to do. We cannot ask in earnest, what do we do? 
if we are not prepared for the answer to require that we go with little more than the power of God and faith in Jesus Christ. Discipleship is anything but hypothetical. What are we willing to leave behind and take on to bear witness to the world that the gospel is actual and it is life changing? What will we do?